Hello everyone. This part of the course is dedicated to working on the Yandex Games platform. We'll integrate its SDK, publish the game to the platform, and enable some useful features. But before all that, we need to make a WebGL build, which is what we'll do in this lesson. A build is a version of our project that's compiled for a target platform. Unity supports many platforms, including WebGL. We'll optimize our project for the browser environment, create a build, and run the game on our computer. First thing first, let's switch platforms in our Unity build settings. Go to File, Build Settings. And here we have the list of platforms. The default one is Windows slash Mac. Choose WebGL instead and click Switch Platform. This process may take some time, depending on the size of your project. It's mostly converting textures and files into a format that's compatible with WebGL. We have a small project, so it got done quickly. If you don't have the WebGL module and WebGL is grayed out, like Android here, make sure you have installed it in the Unity Hub. As a reminder, the Installs tab shows the Unity versions. Click on the gear icon Add Modules. And having installed the actual engine, check WebGL Build Support. I've already installed it. Now let's head to Project Settings. We need to change some stuff there. Click Player Settings, which takes you to the Project Settings tab containing the project's global parameters. Company name, you can just write your own name here. Product name, a tentative name for your project. Let's think of something. Manrun. Good. This is where you upload an icon, but no need to do it now. Yandex Games will take care of it. Next. Resolution and presentation. Leave the default template. This is how the game will be displayed in the browser. We'll make some edits to it later. Leave splash image as is. Other settings. If you're running an older version of Unity, mine is 2022, then you may have warnings or errors in yellow here. That's because some functions in the newer Unity versions are not supported by WebGL 1, an earlier version. If that happens, uncheck Auto Graphics API you'll see a list containing WebGL 1 and WebGL 2. In my Unity version, WebGL 1 is disabled, so you don't even see it here. In your list, hover over it and press dash. WebGL 2 is what we need. If there are no yellow errors, just leave this checked. Leave the rest of the tab at default. Under Publishing Settings, make doubly sure you check Decompression Fallback. Without it, Yandex Games will reject your submission. These are all the main settings you need to configure. Another important point. There's this one quirk in recent Unity versions. It relates to optimization and possible slowdown in your game. By default, there's this one effect added to scenes. Let me demonstrate it on a new object. You can see this slight darkening effect on the intersections and edges of surfaces. Let me get a better angle. Here, you can see it on this box. There's a gradient where it cuts into the floor. This is a pretty effect. It gives you a clearer, more realistic picture. This is something you can observe on real-world objects too. However, it may cause significant lag on weaker platforms such as mobile and browsers. That's why it's better to turn it off. Here's how. Go to Quality. There are different settings here. You need Render Pipeline Asset. Click it, and you'll see the relevant asset highlighted in the project panel. Here. This is what's being used for your current rendering settings. Switch to the Inspector tab and click here. That'll highlight this file. Click it, and you'll see the given scene's effects. I strongly advise on checking screen space ambient occlusion. In case you're developing for a browser or a mobile device, if this setting is enabled, even the simplest project with a single box will cause slowdown on those weaker platforms. Some more on optimization and quality. Go back to project settings, quality. There are several levels of quality here. 
you can actually switch between them using a script. So you'd write a special script to make it possible for users to change these quality settings in the UI. Right now, you can see green ticks here. It means Windows would use these settings, while the browser would use these. This may be confusing when just starting on a game. You'd probably want some kind of set baseline quality. Say, average quality settings, or even maximum settings, and then optimize those. That would be easier. Right now though, we have balanced settings checked for the browser. But in the scene view, we have high fidelity. What I like to do is click on the trash can icon and delete all levels except high fidelity. Then, based on how well the game is running, you can tweak individual quality settings. Just to clarify, if we retrace our steps here, you can see that we choose the quality setting for WebGL. The one that's set for WebGL. All right, we're all set up. The quality settings are in order. So now it's time to open build settings and start the build process. Choose the output folder. I usually just create a new folder inside the project. Let's call it manrun underscore build. Select it. Press save to save the changes to the scene. The build process begins. It may take some time, usually takes longer on low-end hardware. We're done. The project build is ready. If we go into the man run underscore build folder, we'll see several files inside it. Unity's console will display the following message, build completed with a result of succeeded. Sometimes things may go wrong during the build process. There may be errors in the project and so on. The build will fail, but you'll see the underlying errors here in the console and be able to debug. This is what our build folder looks like. Note this file, index.html. It's the heart of our build, the actual page with the game, the build folder. It contains our project's data, which, as you can see, weighs a lot. Also, you have template date. There are some pictures here. For example, a progress bar, logos, full screen button. It's all here. If you want, you can edit these in Photoshop, tweak the progress bar, for example, and put it back here. This is the style.css file. We don't need it. Let's now run index.html. I just double click it, which opens it in a browser, and this is what we see. It says loading web pages from a file is not supported. Due to security reasons, most browsers can't run a Unity project from a computer, from a file. If we upload it to a server, like the Yandex platform, then everything will run fine. But we first need to test several iterations. And for that the local way would be best, to avoid the lengthy upload process. We'll create a local server on our computer. And then we'll run our project through it. It's not as hard as it sounds. It boils down to downloading a program and checking one setting. Let's do that now. The program is called XAMPP. It'd work well for what we need. Go to the official website. And download the version for your OS Windows, Linux, or Mac. After the installer has downloaded, run it. Next, next, next. This is the installation folder. I'll leave it as default C drive. That's about it. Wait for the install to complete and click finish. This is the window that opens after. We can also bring it up manually. Let me close it for now to show you how. On your C drive, you now have the XAMPP folder. At its very bottom, there are a bunch of exe files you need XAMPP control. Once it's open, just press this start button. Status change detected, 
running. That's it. We've just spun up a local server on our computer. Now, collapse the window. Find the Tox folder and create a folder inside. I'll call mine games. Move your Unity project here. So I just take the manrun underscore build folder and copy it, cut and paste it, whatever. But it's not going to work just like that. If you double click index.html, you get the same error. Here's how to launch the game from the local server. In the address bar, enter localhost slash the name of your folder in our case games. Enter. This is what we see. This is a list of all the projects in the games folder. We only have one. Launch it from here. As you can see, the game works. You can play it and collect some coins. Same as in Unity. One more thing. This window here. It has some icons, the Unity logo, and also its size is fixed. When we resize the browser window, it just remains 900 by 600 pixels. This may work for some applications, but games published to the Yandex platform need to fill the screen. People may play your game on mobile or in a browser. And having a scroll bar there would be weird. The user would have to keep scrolling up and down to see the full picture. That's no good. Let's make some edits to the index.html to stretch the window to the screen borders. Locate index.html. In your build folder, use the editor of your choice to open it. I'll use Visual Studio. Let's make the changes. First thing first. Look at these lines with the numbers 960 and 600. This is the window size. Highlight these lines and replace them with these ones. I'll leave an index.html file with the necessary changes in the video description for you to just copy this stuff over. In future lessons, we will be working with HTML more, but you won't need any in-depth knowledge of it. It'll mostly be copy-pasting. Right. Still, having a general understanding of programming helps. For example, I want to hide this lower part with logos. Here, in the HTML file, there's a code block named footer, which contains the logo, full screen button, and some other stuff. Let's just delete the entire block. Like that. Because this is HTML code, you can't use forward slash forward slash to skip over code using comments. HTML has a special tag for comments. So, just delete this. Now, we have this script tag here. Which signifies that this whole block is JavaScript code. Here, there's a variable named full screen button. You'll want to remove this button when publishing to Yandex Games because the platform has its own full screen button. We can comment at the start of the line. Notice that here I actually can use forward slash forward slash because this whole chunk of code is JavaScript nested inside HTML and it behaves like JavaScript. As for full screen button, there's a block down at the bottom. Here, that's the function that's called when you Click the full screen button. Let's use comments again to prevent the execution of this code. Then locate canvas.style.width and, instead of these numbers, give it a value of 100%. Do the same for height. These are all the changes we needed to make. Let's save it and see how the game looks now. Go back to localhost. Here, in the browser, and refresh the page.
Let's see what we've got. No scroll bars anywhere. And the game fills the screen at any window size, basically the same way as it does in Unity's game view. We have launched the game on our computer through a local server. This is a convenient way to test performance, or make sure that the game runs the same way in the browser and in Unity. The index.html file governs how the game is displayed in the browser, and it also has some JavaScript code in it to run the game. In the following lessons, we'll use this same file to integrate Yandex functions.